On one rainy night in a small city in Korea, a single mother named So Young, walks towards a church. She can't raise her child on her own so she decides to have the church raise her baby boy. She doesn't want anyone to know that it's her baby, so she drops him outside the baby box. Luckily, two detectives who are investigating the church see it and put the baby inside the box out of love. The bell then notifies the workers inside the church. Dong, the church's staff, peeks outside to see whether there is anyone outside, especially the mother. Upon checking the baby, Sunk, another staff member, finds a letter from So Young, saying that she will come back later to pick him up. But, there is no contact information or even her name in it. Sunk then orders Dong to delete the CCTV footage when So Young dropped her baby off. Turns out, the two plan to sell the baby in the adoption black market, with Sunk as the mastermind. They then drive throughout the night to the outskirts where Sunk lives. Unbeknownst to them, the detectives are tailing them from behind. In the city, Sunk uses a laundry store as a facade to run his illegal business. Suddenly, he gets a phone call from Dong. He notifies Sunk that So Yank is now looking for her baby. In addition, So Yank also confesses that she left her baby outside the baby box, making both Sunk and Dong realize that another party might be involved. Meanwhile, So Yank is inside the church, looking for her baby. However, there are no records of him in the administration. Dong also lies, saying that he hasn't seen her baby last night. He takes So Yang to look around, to convince her that her baby is nowhere in the church. Afraid that So Yang is going to report it to the police, Dong meets her secretly and invites her to meet her baby at Sunk's store. They make her feel bad for abandoning her baby outside the box. In addition, So Yang also left a note saying that she will pick her baby up later, which makes him unable to be adopted and closes his future possibilities. Then, Sunk persuades her, saying that they are only looking for suitable parents that will raise and love her baby. So Yang still doesn't believe in their stories and plans to report them to the police. To prevent it, Sunk reveals that the market price for a baby boy is around 10 million won which will be divided among the three. So Yang finally agrees to the plan and follows them to meet the potential buyer the next morning. When Sunk is preparing for the departure, some thugs show up. They want to collect Sunk's gambling debt and he promises the money next week. And so, the three depart on their long journey to find new parents for So Yang's baby boy. And of course, the two detectives are on their tail to find evidence of illegal human trafficking. After a long trip and some small talks to ease up the tension, the three finally arrive. They meet the potential parents, but they don't like the baby's facial features. They say that it's unlike the pictures posted. They bargain for him, lowering the agreed price by 60%. They even ask whether they can pay in 12 months installments or not can't stand their attitude, so Yank stands up for her baby. She chases the potential customers away with insinuations, and leaves them angrily. Back at the car, the two don't know what to do with so Yank's attitude. They decide to check on the other potential buyers afterwards. Meanwhile, in a hotel, a murder has happened and the police are on it. The man broke his neck after being beaten up by an unknown assailant, but the police deduce that the culprit is a woman. Back to the three, they continue their journey with the detective still following them. They stop by an orphanage where Dong was raised. He is so popular there and the kids look up to him. After the meet and greet, Dong spends some time reminiscing about his past with the orphanage's madam that has raised him. Meanwhile, Sunk and So Yank are looking for other adoptive parents for the baby. A boy from the orphanage shows up and asks Sunk to adopt him. Of course, the request is denied because Sunk doesn't have enough for himself. Over the dinner, the orphanage's madam shares that one of the kids was adopted but then abused when the parents have their own biological children. This sparks So Yang's concerns about her son. She grabs her crying baby and brings him to the car, singing him a lullaby to sleep. At the same time, the detectives are planning a GPS tracker inside their car. Hearing the lullaby, they start to understand that there is still some love from So Yang for her baby. At night, Sunk is bathing the baby. Meanwhile, Dong and So Yang are arguing about So Yang's action for abandoning her baby. Dong hates it when parents abandon their babies with a come back later letter, because only one out of 40 parents actually come back for them. So Yank lashes out and argues back about how Dong is raised in an orphanage and still becomes nothing even at this age. After Dong left, Sunk reveals that Dong's parents left him in the orphanage with the letter, but never came back for him, making him sentimental about it. Meanwhile, Dong is out looking for air. His junior says that every kid in the orphanage looks up to him. They will be very disappointed if Dong comes back to the orphanage without being someone successful. Meanwhile in fact, Dong is still disappointed at his current self. In the morning, 
So Yank apologizes to Dong for what she said last night and he forgives her. Back to the investigation, the police find that the murderer is actually So Yank while she was working as a prostitute, and her baby is also the victim's son. The police ask her whereabouts to the pimp. She says that she has run away after not having the heart to abort her baby. The news reaches the detectives, making the condition much more complicated. They want to close the case immediately, so the detective promises to capture Sunk and Dong in three days. To speed the timeline up, they plan to plant a fake buyer and catch Sunk and Dong red-handed while doing the transaction. Meanwhile, the three are driving somewhere to meet a buyer. Suddenly, another potential buyer comes up with an offer twice the market price. The offer is put up as bait by the detectives. And so, the two parties are going to the designated place. Suddenly, Sunk pulls over and finds the boy from the orphanage in their car. He knows everything about their plan and insists on going together. Sunk and Dong reluctantly invite him to the journey. Along the way, the boy is so talkative and innocent. He is so charming and lightens the mood very much, making the rest of the three laugh and get closer. Arriving at the meeting point, they finally meet the potential buyer. So Yank asks whether they will cherish her baby even though they have their biological children later on. The buyers stutter upon answering the question. Turns out, they are the buyers planted by the detectives, and the question is out of the script. Dong suspects them and bait them with some questions about infertility treatment. After knowing that they are fake, they refuse to do the transaction with them. So Yank is amazed by Dong's knowledge and praises him. Suddenly, the boy opens the window while they are in a car washing machine. All of them laugh so hard due to the boy's mischief. The boy's existence has truly brought them all together under a very unlikely condition. They start to open up about their past experiences, and even so Yank reveals her true name to them. Having failed on their last attempt, the detectives plan to use the murdered man's wife to threaten So Yank. They reveal that So Yank is the murderer and the man's wife threatens her over a call. After the call, the detectives are outside waiting for her. They offer to reduce her sentence if she agrees to wear a bug and help capture Sunk and Dong. She agrees to it, but is still conflicted deep within her heart. Back at the hotel, Sunk and Dong are making a schedule to feed milk for her baby. They happily take care of the baby, as if he is their own. Sunk has also just found a new buyer in Seoul, who offers three times the market price for the baby. In the morning, the baby is crying non-stop due to his fever. They bring him to a hospital immediately. Slowly, the detectives who have been following them start to care about the baby too. Despite this, the senior detective doesn't like So Young for being irresponsible as a mother. After the consultation, So Young thanks Sunk and Dong for taking care of her baby. Most of the time, they care more for him than she does. On the other hand, the victim's wife has hired some thugs to buy the baby from Sunk and Dong for a big sum of money. She claims that she will raise him, but the thugs have their doubts. One of the thugs knows Sunk and immediately makes the offer to him. At night, the detective summons So Young and try to dig deeper into her problems. They try to help her and defend her in court later, but So Young refuses their help and puts up a strong front instead. So Young and the senior detective then continue debating whether it's better to abort her baby or give birth than abandon him. It seems like they are very different in their response to the matter. Feeling like they can be trusted, So Young confesses her murder to Sunk and Dong. She asks them to leave her since the man's wife is on her tail. The next morning, Sunk secretly meets the thugs to do the transaction. He still keeps it from Dong so he goes alone. Turns out, Dong is actually in the car and has found the detective's GPS tracker. Knowing Sunk's true intention, Dong asks to not leave So Yank alone and he agrees to it. Dong leaves to take care of the tracker. Shortly after, the thug comes, but Sunk has changed his mind. He cares more for the baby's safety rather than the big money promised by the man's wife. The thug doesn't like the response. Luckily, Dong comes and knocks him unconscious. They then rush to Seoul to meet the other buyer, while the detectives are following the GPS tracker somewhere else. However, the diversion doesn't last long as So Yank reveals their destination to the detectives. Arriving at Seoul, they immediately meet the last potential buyer. The new couple is sincere in raising the baby as their child. They have just had a stillborn baby, making them long for the baby very much. Even the mother breastfeeds So Yank's baby, something that even So Yank has never done. However, they request that So Yank never meets her baby anymore. They give So Yank some time to think about it. After the meeting, they go to an amusement park together. There, they take photos, play some games, and even get on a Ferris wheel. Slowly, they start to become a real family. On the wheel, Dong says to So Yank that he wants to raise her baby as the father. 
This makes So Yang smile a bit because for once, she is sincerely wanted by someone. However, it is too late to start over that way, because she will be arrested for the murder. Then, So Yang confesses that she doesn't want her baby to be a murderer's child, that's why she abandoned him. Dong who hears it feels relieved, as his mother might also have a certain reason for abandoning him when he was born. At night, Sunk meets his daughter whom he has abandoned. His daughter says that her mother is now married to a better man, and they are expecting a baby soon. She also asks him politely to not meet her or her mother anymore, before leaving Sunk alone. This makes Sunk grief badly despite the fact that he is about to make some big money. Back at the hotel, the boy requests So Yang to pretend as if she were their mothers, and thanks them for being born. So Yang agrees and starts to thank the boy, Sunk, Dong, and finally her baby. All of them have never heard this statement from their mother and they are sent to tears. The boy then closes the session by thanking So Yang for being born too. Empathizing her condition, the senior detective meets So Yang and offers her some parole should she turn herself in, so that she may live with her baby later on. However, So Yang doesn't want her baby to live like her and still wishes the couple from earlier to adopt him. Meanwhile, Sunk wakes up in the middle of the night to secretly sell the baby to the thug. However, Dong loves So Yang, and he intends to sacrifice himself by selling the baby to the couple from earlier instead, so she can get the sentence reduced. He does this to ensure that So Yang can be released earlier and take care of her baby. Sunk agrees to the cause and tries to persuade the thug who wants to steal So Yang's baby. Back to Dong, he finally agrees to sell So Yang's baby to the couple. Suddenly, the detectives come in with a charge to incriminate Dong for human trafficking. In addition, So Yang has also turned herself in, so she will be released much earlier. On the other hand, Sunk cannot reason with the thug, so he has killed him to tie up loose ends. Three years later, So Yang's baby has been raised by the senior detective and her husband. Sometimes, they let him meet the couple who wants to adopt him but the couple still can't be his official adoptive parents. So Yang has been released for some months and has started anew, but she still doesn't want to meet her son. The senior detective writes and asks her to meet her baby, as she still has great expectation that So Yang will raise her son one day. In the end, So Yang embraces her past and runs to meet her grown-up son for the first time. Subscribe to watch more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like and comment to help the channel out. Thank you for watching, and see you, next time.